Howdy, everybody. Um, I'm here just to give you a brief um, overview of mirrors and lenses again, just to refresh your memories as the AP test is two days away. Um, I want to remind you that for mirrors, we have concave and convex. And for a concave mirror, that's where this is the shiny side here. And all rays that are traveling parallel, parallel to this principal axis, we call it, all reflect through what's called the focus. And the focus is very approximately, well, to a very significant extent, it is approximately halfway between the center, the radius of curvature, and the shiny surface of the mirror. So again, a parallel ray reflects through the focus. Conversely, a ray that leaves an object and goes through the focus leaves the shiny surface traveling parallel to the principal axis. A convex mirror is one which the focus is on the non-shiny side of the mirror and we will do the ray diagrams but again this is the radius of curvature and that's half of that distance there. A real quick word, the College Board does not typically use terms like convex, they'll use diverging frequently. Likewise, what I typically call a concave mirror, they will call a converging mirror. I'd like to move the camera um, and do the ray diagrams very quickly for you for both mirrors and lenses. You'll also notice that um, I sent in an email the mirror blanks. The purpose, of course, of sending you these blanks is so that you can follow along to this video, kind of like a tutorial, and complete the ray diagrams. I can't think of anything that's a better practice for you than that. Um, you've seen them before, but it's been quite a long time ago, first semester for sure. I also included the sign conventions on the last page of this packet, this PDF that has the mirror blanks. You'll recall that the focal length is positive typically for a converging lens or mirror, but it's negative for a diverging, a convex mirror or a concave lens, both of which are diverging optical devices. So you gotta remember when uh, something's negative or positive if you're gonna have a multiple choice question and use the I do, I die, I fight and get the right answer. So let's do those diagrams now. I'd like to reiterate that having a straight edge is a good idea, both on test day and now, as we go ahead and do these quick ray diagrams. For a concave mirror, a converging mirror, there really, really are only four cases to, f to worry about. The first case is when the object is very far away compared to the focal length or even the center of curvature 2F. Let's go ahead and draw our rays. Ray one, I typically draw parallel to the principal axis. And such a ray will reflect through the focal point. The second ray goes through, again, typically, goes through F on the way to the mirrored surface. Such a ray, of course, will reflect parallel to the principal axis. The intersection of these two rays after the rays strike the mirror and reflect converge after striking the mirror is where the image is formed. This image we can actually show you with a piece of paper. It's really right there. It is, it is real. Um, the words we use to describe this image, of course, is real, inverted, 
or upside down and it is reduced in size or you might say smaller but let's get used to all the vocabulary that we need to know conceivably the next case so to speak is one I like to do when the uh, when the uh, object is at the center of curvature 2F. Again, ray 1 travels parallel to the principal axis and then after reflecting travels through F. Ray 2 goes first through F on the way to the mirror. After leaving the mirror surface, it travels parallel to the principal axis. You'll notice that those two rays, if your drawing is done well, and I got lucky this time, um, the image is directly under the object at the same distance from the mirror as the object was. This image is real. It is the same size, and this is inverted. At this point, we'll probably go pretty quickly. Let's jump to the case where the object is between F and 2F. Again, ray 1 leaves the object traveling parallel to the principal axis. After reflection, it travels through F. Experience tells me to continue this ray pretty far because this is the situation where the image is larger. Ray 2 leaves the head of the object, the top of the object, goes through F, and then reflects back in real space in a place where light actually can converge. And those two rays do converge on a point that is fairly far from the object, I should say very far from the mirror. This image is also real. Again, I don't want to reset this again, but you know that if the rays really do cross after leaving the mirror or lens, that produces a real image. It is clearly inverted and it is enlarged. The last case of the concave mirror and probably the hardest one to draw is when the object is in front of F. The first ray is not hard. It's the same as it always was. It goes parallel to the principal axis and then reflects through the focal point. But the second ray, we typically go from the head to the focus to the mirror and that ray doesn't really exist in this situation. However, however, we can have a ray that comes off the head as if it had originated at F. Notice that I've lined up my ruler with F, the head, and the mirror. And I'm just going to draw that ray that leaves the head as if it had come through F. That ray will, of course, reflect parallel to the principal axis. Now, those two rays are divergent. They do not ever come together. But our brain makes sense of that light, that divergent light, and creates an image. An image is formed that is behind the mirror. And I'm going to trace each of these rays with the arrowheads on them backward. As if light had originated behind the mirror, which it does not. And our brain assembles an image that's not a real image, it's a virtual image. It is indeed enlarged and upright. It's a virtual image, it's enlarged, and it is not inverted. It is erect or upright. So that's really the concave mirror. I gave you an extra blank um, just in case you needed it. Let's do the convex mirror. 
Now the convex mirror has only one case. No matter where the object is along the principal axis in front of the shiny side of the mirror, you get the same result. While there's a variation in the size of the object compared to the size of the image, it's always the same three words in terms of it being upright or, 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 or inverted or enlarged or reduced. It's always the same three descriptors. So I'm just going to do one drawing. Ray 1, again, you probably are not surprised, is, is made to go parallel to the principal axis. And then when it reflects, it reflects away from F. So that ray goes away from the mirror as if it had originated at the focal point. The second ray, again, typically you go toward F. But you can't get toward F because it's behind the shiny side of the mirror. But that ray that heads toward F will reflect parallel to the principal axis. Again, these rays are divergent. There is no place in three-dimensional space where they ever come together again, at least in the geometry that we understand. So again, your brain assembles an image by thinking that light, hey, it always travels in straight lines, so it must have come from behind the mirror. This light travels in a straight line, so it must have come behind the mirror or originated back here. And where those rays cross, our brain assembles an image. And that image is upright, clearly. It is reduced, always. And it is virtual. It is virtual because you cannot put a piece of paper, a screen, or a bed sheet or something behind the mirror and expect an image to show up in focus on that screen paper, bed sheet, whatever. We had to draw dotted lines and, and say that light came from somewhere we know it didn't. That's what leads to a virtual image. A word really quickly about the convex mirror. I've said this before in the class, you know this, but the convex mirror is the mirror that is on the passenger door side of a car. And because objects that are viewed in a convex mirror are always smaller, car manufacturers put frosted letters on the glass that say objects in mirror are closer than they appear. They do that to avoid lawsuits because of course when you look in a mirror and see something small, the human brain just says, hey, it must be far away. So if you see a big Hummer SUV and it looks tiny, your brain figures, well, that isn't very close to me, it's far away, so I can change lanes and Accidents have led to lawsuits that have led to companies deciding to preemptively pre just tell you that objects in this mirror are closer than they appear. There's the mirrors. Let's do the lenses super fast. It really will go super fast. You'll see a correlation between concave mirrors and convex lenses because both devices are converging devices optically speaking. Okay, so typically I like to go out here way beyond 2F and let's do our ray diagram. Now this is a glass lens, it's not a mirror. So light typically travels right through it. So I pretend as if all the bending occurs in the middle of the lens, which is certainly not true, but it's the way all books do it and it's good enough. So that light that goes parallel to the lens on the way to the lens, parallel to the principal axis, it's going to go through the focal point on the opposite side of the lens. The second ray, again, I like to draw through F. And when it reaches the lens and begins converging, it will travel parallel to the principal axis after leaving the lens. The intersection of these two rays is where the image is formed. This image, again, is real. It's a real image. Um, in fact, lenses always, if it's upside down, it's real. That's a shortcut. 
or if it's real, it's upside down, whichever way you want to think about it. This is reduced, smaller, and it is inverted or upside down. The second case typically is at 2f, same two rays. I will stop talking so I can speed this up a little bit. These lenses aren't perfect. I drew them with some curved object that's kind of got a large radius of curvature. But anyway, in a perfect world, it would be at 2f. It would be the same size. There would be like this hourglass symmetry to this drawing. However, it's not perfect. But again, the image is real. It should be the same size. And it is inverted. Let's do the next case where we have an object somewhere in between F and 2F. Ray 1 goes through F after leaving the lens, after passing through the lens. Ray 2 goes, oops, I missed it. You get the idea though. It should have gone through F on the way of the lens, traveled parallel after leaving the lens, and under the principal axis, beyond 2F, an inverted, real, and enlarged image is formed. The last case is the hard one. And honestly, they tend to throw you, you know, curveballs. And often you'll see this case um, as part of a question. Ray 1 is the easy one. It always leaves parallel and it always goes through F. But there's no way to have a ray go through this F and then go through the lens. As we did with the concave mirror, we're going to imagine a ray that leaves the head as if it had originated at F. That ray, and now it misses this lens entirely, but don't worry about that. Imagine if the lens were a bit taller and that ray will leave the lens traveling parallel to the principal axis. Again, these rays are divergent. They do not come together. So our brain makes sense of this situation by, again, assuming that light travels in straight lines and somewhere back in time, so to speak, these two rays were in the same place. And that location, oh, this is right on top of it, but that is where the image is formed, believe it or not. Um, because we had to go backward with dotted lines, this image is not real. It is enlarged, and it is erect or upright. Okay, we have one more drawing to do. It may be the hardest one to remember, and maybe the hardest one, period and that is the concave lens, the diverging lens. Like the convex mirror, it doesn't really matter where I put the object because there's only one case. So I'm just gonna put him, I don't know, yeah, da, 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 let's just stick the, I'm sticking with reds and pinks for my object, so I'm gonna do that. I'll just put him near F. Um, ray one, same as it ever was. Same as it ever was, same as it ever was for you Talking Heads fans. And the days go by. Now this ray, this type of lens is divergent. Parallel rays spread out rather than converge, they spread out. And so how they spread out is as if they are spreading away from F. That is to say parallel rays, rays parallel to the principal axis, leave the lens as if they had diverged from F. So there's my first ray. Now the second ray, I typically go toward F because then, but a lot of books just go straight through the center of the lens. It doesn't really matter. In fact, I'm just gonna do that because if you had to, if you had to do this on a test, um, you're just better off making it easy on yourself. So a ray that goes right smack dab through the center of the lens, while it refracts on both sides, 
these, these portions are parallel. Um, this is good enough. And honestly, we only have to trace one ray backward this time. The one that went away from F when traced backwards comes to this point here where they were, quote unquote, the light was once together. That is where our image is formed. This image is not a real image. Um, whenever, for a lens, the object and the image are on the same side of the lens, then it's a virtual image. But the image is reduced, smaller, it is upright or erect, and it is virtual. I, I will draw the, the other ray, I'll get my orange pen out here, and do the one that I, like I might have done in class. But imagine a ray that heads toward the lens as if it was going to go through F. That one will leave the lens traveling parallel to the principal axis. Notice when you, when you um, trace that one backward, it ends up in the same exact place um, as this red one that I, so either way, you're gonna get an intersection with the green ray in the same location. And you're gonna have a reduced upright virtual image. Uh, I think these two rays here are easiest to draw. You know, the last thing I'll just say one more time, and I've said this before, is with lenses, again, the College Board tends to use the term converging and diverging. And the way to look, let's draw the principal axis too. Um, but light that is incident on the lens comes, it, it converges on a focal point. Um, light in a diverging lens or a concave lens diverges as if diverging from a single point, the focus there. Um, I thought that was probably worth showing you one time. Anyway, that hopefully can be edited to a short little tutorial, and I will see you in Zoom.